Hello everybody, thanks for joining me out here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm here in Oregon. Today I will be demonstrating to you how to do a simple transect. Now, a simple transect is basically a modified Browns transect. And the purpose is to make it fast, efficient, and simple. Oregon. The simple transect is a modified Browns planar transect. It uses the same equations from 1974, the same numbers that Brown used. It's just uh, modified to be faster, quicker, and easier. I call this one simple because the idea behind it is to make it really simple, fast, and efficient. So I want to preface this with if you're already going out and doing lots of transects within a plot and several plots within an acre and you're out getting good science, good data, by all means keep doing that. Uh, the more arduous, the more data you gather, the better those numbers are going to be. I mean, that's, that's true. However, if you're pressed for time or maybe you're low on staffing or there's some other uh, reason that that is difficult to perform that kind of uh, inventory, I've come up with this uh, faster way to do it, basically. And to get more information, details, the equations, the numbers, how we came up, what our logic was, you can look in our um, simple fuel loading calculator uh, reference guide. Um, also a shout out to Pete Parsons, who is the man who put together the programming uh, for this simple calculator that you can use online and you can in real time out in the field, right out here in the woods, um, punch in your numbers and get your fuel tonnage, bada bing, bada boom, just like that. Um, so you're going to need a few, a few tools to go and do these transects and I'm going to lay them out and we're going to, we're going to check that out next. So, so come on, let's go do this. So the idea behind this simple transect, you may be asking like, why are you doing another transect when there's already methodology out there? Um, good question. Um, the idea behind it, like I said earlier, was to make it simple, fast, and efficient with getting accurate enough information. Is the science going to be perfect? No, I mean, come on. Uh, there's so many factors involved. People's eyes are calibrated differently, uh, different experiences, skill levels, uh, just, you know, missing something in account. There's so many variables uh, present that, uh, you know, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be close, but it's not going to be exact. That's why it's called theory. Um, so anyways, one of the ideas, the reasons I wanted to create the simple or modified transect uh, was just to get everybody on the same page. Uh, I've been doing the uh, smoke management field coordinator for a few years now and one of the things I found out a little bit disturbing is that there is no standard uh, protocol out there. Um, federal folks are using, uh, you know, Forest Service will be using one type of methodology, BLM a different one, uh, private landowners a whole variety of different things, uh, ODF different stuff, uh, Fish and Wildlife, everybody's kind of doing their own thing. So the idea back here is like, let's, let's all do the same methodology to get us all on the same page talking the same numbers. So we're talking apples and apples instead of apples and oranges. Um, the other thing that uh, it helps to have a a standard is when you call the forecasters, the Oregon Smoke Management Forecasters, to get clearance on a burn, and you say, I got these numbers based off of the simple transect, this modified burns, uh, modified browns transect that I'm gonna do for you today. Uh, the forecasters have it in their head what you're talking about, confident in those numbers. Uh, so it makes the communication uh, equal instead of everybody kind of scratching their head is like, well, which, which method did you use? So it's, it's creating a standard. Even if the numbers aren't perfect, if we're still talking the same numbers, the same methodology, the same standard, uh, that's going to be so much better than everybody just out doing their own thing. So Now I try to carry the least amount of equipment that I need to into the field. So here's a couple of items you're going to want to take with you to do your simple inventory. You're going to want a logger tape or a D tape of some sort. It could be a regular measuring tape. You're going to want your ruler. Now a clear ruler works the best. Uh, this happens to be a Westcott engineering ruler and if you look closely up in the top there that's in tenths of an inch. Tenths of an inch. That's pretty important to uh, get one of these rulers. The reason I like clear is this you can use it to and you can see your your particle um, underneath and, and get your exact amount of inches. However, you may want to use a go, no, go gauge. And I just made this one with an Excel spreadsheet and uh, it's the same thing. I have a, I have a one inch and I have a, a quarter inch and then I have three inch. So 
Uh, it's really cheap, uh, and if you lose them, not a big deal. It's super light. I just uh, laminated so it could stay on the field. And then the back side, I put um, how to uh, measure a, the tree height, which I use to measure pile heights. If I get a pile that's super tall, um, you're going to want something to write with, obviously, in your uh, your transect form. This one is specifically made for the simple transect tally sheet. There's a lot out there. You can use whatever you want, but these are a couple of things that you're going to want out in the field to help you with your um, measurements. I also like to carry uh, my iPad because I put my information right in there. Um, go to the website if you want to find an online version of the Transect the tally sheets and you can do this live online if you prefer to go electronic. Okay, you got your material. So the next phase is to pick the spot that you want to do your Transect on. All right, so you, what you want to do is you want to, you want to pick an area that's the most representative of your unit. Um, you don't want to pick the area that's got the least amount of fuels because uh, that'll skew your numbers. And you know, humans, we, we tend to be a little bit like water and picking the path of least, least resistance, but you don't want to do that, right? And, and vice versa, you don't want to go looking for like, oh, look at all this fuel and I want to, I want to get all these numbers and show how much fuel is out here. Um, that's not good science either, right? Garbage in, garbage out. So you want to find a place that is representative of your unit. So I'll walk the unit and get a feel for what the unit looks like and try to, in my mind, I was like, okay, what looks the most average spot uh, that looks like this unit? I actually going to pick three transects. I want to pick a high end, a low end, and an average look of the unit. Now, if you so it's also a very good idea to take a picture of your transect so you can recreate your imagery in your head if you forgot something you can kind of help jog your memory where this was at if you know for some reason you forgot to track the height of the brush or whatever obviously I've picked a really nice manicured section for the for the ease of this video you're gonna have a lot more than this most likely in your in your transect anyways again try to find something representative string out your transect a lot of times it asks for 60 feet 66 feet 100 feet um, that's up to you. The, the longer you go, the further out you go, the better sampling it will be. Again, I'm doing a fast, efficient uh, transect. So the next thing we're going to do is when we string it out, we don't want to walk all over it again. You don't want to disturb those fuels. We're going to come right up to the beginning and we're going to start out counting your zero to a quarter inch fuels. If you have a go no gauge, that's going to be much faster because you could put it down and measure it. But since I don't have a go no gauge, I've got a marker, I got my thumb where the end of it is, and I'm gonna measure if that meets the zero, if that meets the zero to a quarter inch or not. Right at the edge of quarter, so that's one. And look, look, there's a little piece right there, piece of wood, two, three. Now, if you're by yourself, you need to count those zero and a quarters all the way out to six feet. And once you've counted out that you need to mark that on your platform, your little zero to quarter column. You can make little tick marks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, if you've got somebody with you, if you've got a partner with you, then have them marking those ticks off as you're counting them out. And at the same time, you could be counting your zero to quarter and you can be counting your quarter to one and your one to three. You can count them all at one shot if you've got somebody with you. But if you're by yourself, then what I suggest is you count your zero to quarters out all the way to six feet. When you get to your six foot marker, then you turn around, you come back, you count your quarter to one. And when you get to the end of that, then you go back out and you count your one to three to ten. So again, that's zero to quarter at six feet, quarter to one at six feet, one to three at ten feet, and then bigger than three all the way out. Um, so you're only counting downed woody debris. So if it's not wood, it's out. If it's not downed, it's out. In other words, if there's a stick attached to a live branch and it crosses your transect, you don't count it because it's still attached to a live tree. It's not downed. But if it's downed and it's on the ground and it's wood, then you count it. And, and you don't, and you also count what's underneath your transect as well as what's above your transect. So in this example, you can see that I have pieces of wood above my transect. So you're thinking of your transect as like a planer, so it's like a slice through air, and everything above your transect and below your transect, you count. So in this case, I would count these little pieces. Now what if you have a stick that comes across, like here, and it's attached, and then that same piece of stick comes across again? Do you count it twice? Yes, you do. If it's down, 
In other words, that thing is not attached to a live tree and it's not, then it's a downed woody debris. And I count it both because it went through my transect twice. So you do count it two times. So another example, when you're counting everything bigger than three inches, a diameter that's bigger than three inches, um, you have to measure them. So the equation changes when it's bigger than three inches. So let's say I've got a, you can see here I have this larger piece of debris, woody debris on the ground, and it's kind of slanted. So the question would be, do I, do I measure it this with this, with the way the, the transect's going? Nope. You just, where it crosses over, you just measure it, the diameter, perpendicular to the piece of wood. And that's, that's going to be your diameter. So this one is not bigger than three inches, so I actually don't need to measure it. But if it was bigger than three inches, you measure it straight across, perpendicular, not at the slant with the transect. The other thing is that the transect has to cross over the center of your piece of wood to count. So if I had a piece of wood, let's say it was, it was like that but it didn't cross over the middle, it didn't cross the middle of the, the center of that piece of wood, then you wouldn't count it because it just, it just grabbed the edge. It has to go all the way across the center piece in order to count. So the traditional Brown's planar transect would not count stumps. However, in today's world, we've got some equations for stumps, how, how be it, it's kind of uh, still in design mode, but uh, they are looking for some numbers for stumps. For a stump, you're gonna want diameter, height, species, and whether it's sound or rotten. If you can kick it and it falls apart, it's all duffy, punky, it's rotten. But if it's still sound, then you record it as sound. Reason being is that obviously sound stumps don't typically burn as well as a rotten stump because the rot has got more air and it creates more uh, surface to volume ratio creates a little furnace inside of it it burns more as you guys all know what happens when a duffy log duffy stump gets caught on fire it smolders and smolders one more thing to add about stumps is you need to get the density of stumps within your plot so the center of your plot and you string your transect out 37 feet you want to count every stump within the radius of 37 feet of your center so that's a circular plot that's just about a tenth of an acre we can do the math with that and know how many stumps per acre are in a plot. And don't forget to watch the wildlife. All right, guys, now we're at logs. Do you count logs if your transit crosses over it? Yep, it's almost the same as a stump. You're going to want your species. You're going to want your your diameter and you're going to want if it's sound or rotten so now we're moving away from the traditional browns transect and we're moving into vegetation plots um, what i like to do with a veg plot is you just take your ruler um, you find a uh, foot marker on your d tape and then you just simply place your ruler uh, perpendicular to it and so i visualize this one foot and I visualize it going down to the next the next four foot so there's a there's a one foot mark here's a one foot mark and I visualize it comes out to here this is my one foot by one foot plot okay pretty simple visualization there's a lot of different ways to do the veg plots uh, this is probably again one of the easiest ones you want to do this before you do your duff litter sample because your ground is already there um, and not tore up so here's another example of a veg plot that has more of a grass factor in it uh, for the purposes of the simple transect, we're looking for our brush and our grasses because the equations are different. Other programs are going to want different species. They want you to separate between forbs, graminoids, grasses. Uh, for this particular plot, I just want to know the difference between my brushes and my grasses. And you want to get your live component and your dead component percentage. So I take all the green grass, put it in one corner, what's the percentage of coverage? Take all the dead grass, put it in one corner, what's the percentage of coverage um, on that particular fuel type? And again, when you are measuring your grasses or your vegetation, you don't need to stand the stuff up. You just need to measure how tall is it on the average, just the way it lays on the ground. Okay, after you got your veg sample, uh, you're already down on the ground, so let's be efficient. Here's a great place to do a litter and a duff sample. So for your litter and your duff sample, again, looking for at least two, you could do multiple, 
um, trying to find something on the high end, trying to find something on the low end um, tr uh, so that you can get an average out. If it all looks the same, then get something that looks the most representative of uh, your, your, your plot. So same thing, you kind of stick it down in there, try to get it till it feels like mineral Ooh, that's a deep one. Feels like, feels like mineral soil and then scrape it away. Yep, we're in a west side mixed conifer forest, so we're going to have a lot of duff. Um, and so you can kind of see where I've got a little layer of needles and I've got this black, unrecognizable stuff um, turning into to duff. It's, de it's decomposing, so it's becoming duff. I don't know that that's mineral soil. That looks more like... Uh, more like the matting where all the little misos. <laughs> there we go. We got some red clay. Okay. Okay. So right here, you can see that that uh, mineral soil. It's this red clay. So you want to you want to measure from your red clay, your mineral soil. You want to measure from your mineral soil, right there. Put my ruler right there, out to where I can see where it becomes more recognizable. And so I'm going to measure that because I mean I can kind of see that that's. Those are some needles, but that's pretty black, decomposing. I'm going to go to right about here for my duff. So I mark that with my finger, and I get that that measurement, and I'm going to record that. And then from, then it's it's very hard to tell, but where that duff ends, and you, I can recognize, here's some pine needles. It's really easy to recognize. I can recognize these are pine needles. Then I'm going to measure that. And it might be only a quarter of an inch. It might be you know, less, but I'm going to record that and measure that as well. Simple. You want to do a couple of these plots. What happens if I don't have a measuring stick? If you don't have a measuring tool, <laughs> that sucks for you, but I have actually done that. Then you take the tip of your pin, make sure it's nice and clean, and measure from the tip of your pin up to where, where your duff starts. And then you're going to measure that. If you don't have a measuring thing, then you're going to write it down on a piece of paper to record. You're going to put the little tick marks and record it. Hopefully, though, you're not an airhead and you brought your measuring stick and you can just measure it with a ruler like you're supposed to. I'm going to find my tenth of an inch because this is one of those readings that wants the tenth of an inch. Another thing to keep in mind is that one foot is one foot. However, the units on different measuring scales are not the same. The unit that looks like the one inch mark on a D tape are not the same as the standard 12 inch ruler or the standard English tape measure. Just like the units on a tenth of an inch ruler is not the same as a standard 12 inch ruler. But the good news is that whether you have a standard tape measure, a one foot ruler, or a D tape, the one foot section is actually one foot and you can use that out in the field to measure your feet. You can stretch it out for your transect. Now, if you read any of the manuals in uh, fuels inventory, whether it's uh, Firemon or FFI, um, any of those protocols are going to tell you do random transects. And there's a whole lot of ways to do a random transect. You could, um, there's different, you know, use a compass on a, or, a, or a watch and, and, you know, depending on where your hand is, you go randomly out here and do a unit or you could just like throw something behind you and, and, and go do your unit, um, throw, roll some dice. Whatever you want to do, th that's fine. Okay, if you're going to do a lot of transects, then random is absolutely the way to go. But if you're going to do the simple transect, which I'm showing, um, you want three. And so you want it to be representative of the unit that you're looking at, okay? 